Welcome to the course Financial CGE Models with a Simple Banking System, Part 2. Our pedagogical approach will stay the same as the previous module, starting from a very simple framework but adding complexity step by step. In doing so, we will use the material developed in the book by de Calloway, Martins, and Savard, 2001 to explain the construction of a real CGE and using the now well-known models AUTA, AUTETA, and XTER. This module is devoted to the development of a simple financial CGE model, the FAUTA model. Here's the content of this presentation. As a starting point, we will first rediscuss some ideas already presented in module one including the differences between a standard real model and a financial one, by which we mean a simple monetary model. After that, we will characterize a financial model that we will call the F-AUTA, with a simple banking system. We will subsequently present the new equations and variables and discuss how to calibrate the F-AUTA model using the information of a financial SAM. Finally, the GAMS code of the FAUTA model will be used to present the results of two simulations. Okay, let's talk about financial CGE models in general terms. In the previous module, money is introduced at the aggregate level. Money demand equations and the money market equilibrium conditions are introduced. Remember, the money market equilibrium condition is there to replace a redundant equilibrium condition in the real CGE model. Without any other changes, the M outa model is more like a macroeconomic model, but with disaggregated or multiple activities and many commodities. The transmission mechanism of the monetary policy from money supply to inflation is simple and visible. The real impact of a monetary policy on the economy depends on the assumption, either fixed or flexible wage, about the labor market. Rigidities versus flexibility in the real sector of the economy will affect the impact of a monetary policy. Now we would like to introduce a simple banking system in the real CGE model. Our purpose is twofold. This model needs to capture the financial intermediation mechanism between the borrowers and the lenders and in that sense, it is more realistic. The transmission mechanism of the monetary policy is more detailed. The role of the banking system and the central bank is now explicit. What are the difficulties? In building a financial CGE model, we need to take care of stock and flow of assets and liabilities. We need to reconcile the flow of incomes and expenditures and the wealth of households as well as the balance sheets of financial institutions. Implicitly, the model needs to be extended with the activities of an increased number of institutions like a commercial bank and a central bank. We use an abbreviation, ComBank, for the commercial bank and CentBank for the central bank. To calibrate the model, we will need to develop a complete accounting framework with stock and flow of assets and liabilities for the different agents, the household, the firm, the com bank, and the cent bank. The F outa model with a simple banking system. The standard real outa model can be summarized by the following equilibrium conditions. The first condition is for the commodities. Supply equals demand. The demand is the sum of household consumption, intermediate consumption, and investment. The second condition is the equilibrium condition for the labor market. Notice that labor is perfectly mobile between sectors, so that there will only be one wage rate for the entire economy. The third condition is for the capital. Unlike the labor market, the capital is sector specific. In other words, it does not move between sectors. So we expect that there will be the same number of rental rates as the number of sectors. For example, in this model, we have three sectors, so there will be three rental rates. The last condition is for savings and investment. The standard AUTA model is a savings-driven investment model. Notice that we have applied the variable Leon to the last equilibrium condition. 
it is normally applied to one of the commodity's equilibrium conditions. Also, we normally drop one of the commodity's equilibrium conditions because it is redundant. Here we have all the commodity market equilibrium conditions. To this system of equations, we need to introduce two types of banks, a commercial bank and a central bank, as well as different types of assets, money deposits, required reserves, loans, and refinancing loans. What does a commercial bank do in the FIOTA model? One objective of commercial banks, perhaps the most important one, is to receive deposits. In this very simple model, we assume that the representative commercial bank receives deposits from households only. But given the regulation of the monetary authorities, the commercial bank has to maintain a proportional amount of deposits as reserved at the central bank. If it needs to increase its liquidity, the commercial bank could borrow from the central bank at the rate called the refinancing rate. With its available assets, the commercial bank lends to a firm, which uses it to finance its investment. The commercial bank charges its loan at the credit rate. Two important remarks. One, in this version, we assume that the firm doesn't have deposits at the commercial bank and the households don't borrow from the ComBank. Two, it is assumed that the commercial bank operates at a zero profit condition so all the interest income must be equal to the interest payments. That means the commercial bank is a pure financial intermediary. As the lender of last resort, the central bank lends to the commercial bank at the refinancing rate. The central bank receives deposits as required reserves from the commercial bank. In this version of the model, the central bank doesn't pay any interest on the reserve the central bank issues money slash currency. Note that it is assumed that the operational surplus of the central bank is paid to the household. Otherwise, the model is not balanced. We know that this assumption is not reflecting reality. It should be included in the value added of the service sector, but it is a quick fix. The household has many more choices to make than before. Here, we drop the distinction between workers and capitalist households in the real AUTA model to make the discussion and the analysis easier. Instead, we have one homogeneous household getting income from labor and capital. The household receives income, YH, in the form of labor income and dividends from the firm as the return of real assets, capital stock. In this financial model, it also receives interest on deposits in the commercial bank and the operational surplus of the central bank. The YH is divided between consumption, CTH, and savings, SH, in the usual way. For example, through a marginal propensity to save, MPS. Unlike before, MPS is now endogenous and has an increasing function of the interest rate on deposits. For the first time, the household wealth needs to be allocated between two different assets, money and bank deposits. A firm's behavior is also more complex. Their income comes from the operational surplus of the sectors of activities, and their surplus is shared with the household through payment of dividends. However, as they borrow from the commercial bank, they need to pay interest. If their current account is positive, they will be able to partly finance their investment program. The firm's investment will be covered by their own savings and loans from the commercial bank. As we already know, we assume that the firm doesn't retain deposits. But as everybody understands, this is not really an important limitation, since we could simply assume that they borrow the net amount from the commercial bank. If we have these new agents and assets in mind, what are the new variables to introduce in our FAUTA model? First, the interest rate on deposits, ID, the interest rate on the commercial bank credits, IC, and the refinancing interest rates by the central bank, IREF. Second, we also need to define the new assets or liabilities and express them in flows.
for example, as an increase or a reduction in the stock of assets during one period of time. We have variation in the stock in regards to demand, DMD, and supply, DMS, of money, household deposits, DDEP, held by the commercial bank, and central bank refinancing, DREF. Demand, DCDFD, and supply, DCDFS, of credit by and to the firm. Clearly, there is a market for bank credit, since we have a demand for credit from firms and an amount of available credit supplied by the commercial bank. Of course, we need to introduce the corresponding stock of assets and liabilities at the beginning of the period where REF is the stock of refinancing, DEP is the stock of deposits, M is the stock of money, CDF is the stock of credit, RES is the stock of required reserves, as well as the flow of interest payment paid by the commercial bank to the household, IDH, by the firms to the commercial bank, IR, and by the commercial bank to the central bank, IC. We can now start looking at the new equations. We will discuss the income and savings from the household and the income and savings of the firm. We can see immediately that the structure of the household's income has changed, but not the structure of the firm's income. However, the saving and investment behavior of the households and the firms are new. For the households, we need to capture the amount of interest income on deposit to the commercial bank and the central bank's operational surplus. How is this computed? Very simply. Given the interest rate on deposits, ID, the end of period stock of deposits, DEP and DDEP, determines the interest income. The same for the operational surplus of the cent bank. As the central bank is not paying any interest to the required reserve of the commercial bank, the operational surplus of the central bank is limited to the income received from the commercial bank for the refinancing activity. One important addition is the savings behavior of the households. The household's marginal propensity to save, MPS, is an increasing function of the interest rate, ID. S is a scale parameter and sigma S greater than zero is an elasticity parameter. This amount of savings will increase the wealth of the household and will be retained either in cash, a change in the demand for money, DMD, and the rest will increase the amount of deposit to the commercial bank, DDEP. The firm's income is the same as before, for example, the operational surplus of the sectors of activities. But the firm's savings are changed. It now pays out an interest payment on its loans or credits from the commercial bank. In this simple model, we assume that the household doesn't buy investment goods and firms are the only investing agent. However, the firm's investment is not exactly driven by firm savings directly. Yes, it depends on the firm's savings, SF, but it is also linked to the availability of credit. Firms are borrowing from the commercial bank, and if they don't have access to credit, they will be unable to implement their investment program. The last equation is familiar, as it determines the investment price index, PEK. The following two equations show the balance sheets of the central bank and the commercial banks, respectively, in terms of flow. Assets are on the left-hand side, LHS. Liabilities are on the right-hand side, RHS. The change in REF is equal to the change in RES plus the change in money supply, DMS. The change in the supply of credits, DCDFS, and the change in reserves, DRES, is equal to the change in deposits, DDEP, and the change in refinancing, DREF. As indicated already, it is usually assumed that the commercial bank acts as a purely financial intermediary. That means they earn zero profits. This condition is given here. 
From this condition, the interest rate charge on credits is determined. It must be sufficiently high to cover the interest payments to depositors and the cost of the refinancing to the commercial bank. Note that the value added by the banking system, that is, the payments of the wage bill of their employers as well as the remuneration of their own capital stock, building, equipment, etc., is included in the sector of activities in the SAM. The next is the money demand equation. How much money or cash the household wants to hold depends on two factors, a transaction motive and a reserve of value. CTH is the total household consumption budget. We could also choose another variable like GDP to measure the transaction's demand for money. What we need is an aggregate nominal variable that approximates the amount of transactions during a period of time. As a reserve of value, the demand for money depends on the interest rates on deposits, ID, and presents the opportunity cost of holding money. Beta 1 and Beta 2 are, respectively, positive and negative elasticity parameters. If the interest rate on deposits is going up, the household will reduce their demand for cash and will prefer deposits. Z relates to the famous velocity of money, which is a constant to be calibrated. What is the role in the behavior of the central bank? The central bank receives required reserves, but is also the lender of last resort, providing liquidity to the banking system. In this sense, the central bank responds to the demand of liquidity by the commercial bank and as we will see later, it controls the refinancing interest rate. The demand for refinancing, or the central bank loan, by the commercial bank is described in the next equation. It is a decreasing function of the refinancing rate. If I, REF, exceeds the initial rate, I, REF, zero, there will be less demand for the central bank loan. D, REF, zero, and I, REF, zero, are to be calibrated, and we can adjust the function with an exogenous elasticity parameter. It's important to repeat that we assume that the central bank controls I, REF, so it is a monetary policy tool. By increasing or decreasing the interest rate, the central bank will have a direct impact on the demand for refinancing and will be able to control the money supply and the liquidity of the financial system. Is there another policy instrument of the central bank that can serve for the same objective, that is, the controlling of the liquidity of the financial system? Yes, of course. Another monetary policy tool is the required reserve ratio. That is, a proportion of deposits received by the commercial bank that is saved at the central bank. This is called the required reserve ratio. Let's call it theta r, which is calibrated from the SAM. Increasing this ratio, the central bank will be able to freeze a part of the deposits received by the commercial bank and will reduce the capacity of the financial system to provide loans and liquidity to the firm. But in the model code, we do not assign a parameter or a variable to this ratio. We just use it in the ratio format. Indeed, we could create an exogenous variable. You can and should do this. At the macro level, in a standard real CGE model, the closure rule for the savings investment equation is either savings driven or investment driven. We all know the dilemma of the closure of our standard real model. If the saving behavior of the agents is explained by some element of the economic system, it is impossible to have an independent determination of the level of investment. On the other hand, if we want to control the level of investment, one component of the national saving needs to adjust. We follow the standard macroeconomic framework in which investments depend on the interest rate that is the famous IS curve equation. IS stands for savings investment, which represents the goods market equilibrium condition in a macroeconomic model. Moreover, we apply the so-called Tobin Q theory of investment 
which considers the costs and benefits of the investment. Tobin considers that a firm takes into account both the cost of capital and the return on the investment. The firm expects that its investment will generate at least the average rate of return on capital in the economy. This is the approach that we will follow in this simple version of the model. Here we can see the investment equation. It is obviously investment expenditure, so IT divided by PIX GDP is the volume or real investment. T is a scale parameter, Q is Tobin Q, and gamma 1 greater than 0 is an elasticity parameter. Optimally and in the long term, Q tends to converge to 1. Tobin Q is determined by the following equation. RRAVE is the average real rate of return to capital in the economy and IRR is the real interest rate. We note that RRAVE is the average real rate of return to a capital in the economy. RRAVE is a simple average of RRJ, which is the real rate of return to capital in industry J, where delta J is the capital depreciation rate. Depreciation rate does not play any role in the static model. But let's keep it here in case someone wants to modify a dynamic model with money. The real interest rate is determined through the well-known Fisher equation. The real interest rate is equal to 1 plus IC divided by 1 plus the expected inflation rate minus 1, where IC is the nominal credit interest rate and phi EXP is the expected inflation rate. Again, in this static model, the expected inflation rate is not important. In a dynamic model, it will become important since expectations will be endogenously determined by the economic system. Given phi EXP, an increase or a decrease, an IR has a positive or a negative effect on IRR, which tends to decrease or increase Q, and hence the investment. A few remarks on the investment equation. 1. The model is not dynamic, so that RRJ is treated as a proxy of the benefits generated by the investment. 2. An increase in real investment increases KB and VA. The benefit is reflected in RRJ, which is governed by the law of diminishing marginal productivity. 3. Now we have an investment equation that depends simultaneously on the average of RRJ, the real rate of return to capital, and IR, the borrowing cost of capital. 4. We know that in the real model, the closure rule for the savings investment equation is generally a savings-driven mechanism. Now we could drop the savings equal investment relation since the investment now depends on the interest rate. 5. But we will keep it and apply Leon in this relation. In our new walrus equation, Leon is endogenous and should be zero when the model is solved. What happens to the borrowing behavior of firms? Given Q, investment demand is determined for a given elasticity, gamma 1. When given IT and the savings of firm SF, the amount, or flow, of borrowing or credit from the commercial bank is determined, that is, D, C, D, F, D. We can also have some stock variables at the end of the period. These are central bank and commercial bank assets and liabilities. As you can see, the initial stock values are updated by the flow values. You can also notice that the new borrowing of firm to finance the investment appears in the assets of the commercial bank. In equilibrium, the demand for credit will be equal to the supply of credit, V C D F S. Clearly, the interest rate on the credit will adjust in such a way that the supply and demand for the credit will be equal. A new SAM? Yes! Given the financial flow variables, the SAM is extended like this. 
In addition to the usual accounts, we have for each agent a current and a capital account. As we have two new agents, the Commercial Bank and Central Bank, there are two more accounts, ComBank and CentBank, which are added to the income and expenditure transactions to account for the flow of interest payments. For instance, the ComBank receives $200 from the firm and pays out $100 each to the household and the cent bank. The cent bank receives $100 from the ComBank, which is the operational surplus for the central bank, so it transfers it to the household. We can also make a distinction between the current and capital accounts of the agents. The new capital or financial accounts begins with C underscore. Here's how it might work. The household deposits $400 into its financial account, which is in turn divided between M and D as $250 and $150. The firm also transfers $700 into its financial account, which is used to finance its investment expenditure of $400 on an agricultural AGR commodity and $700 on a manufacturing commodity, MAN. But notice that the firm's savings is only $700, so it borrows $400 from the CD account, which is a credit account. This account is funded by the financial account of the commercial bank, which is C underscore ComBank. This account then receives $150 from D and $300 from REF accounts. The central bank gives $300 to the REF account, which is an asset for the central bank. The liability of the central bank is $50 as the required reserve and $250 as the money or currency. BC saves $50 in the R account as the required reserve and lends $400 to the firm. R denotes the required reserve account and M denotes the money or cash account. When your financial SAM has been built, you can use the traditional way of coding in GAMS to assign the initial values to your new variables. For example, the flow of interest received by the household on their deposits IDHO is expressed as SAM house or SAM ComBank. Similarly, the increase or decrease in the required reserve is expressed as SAM R or SAM C ComBank. The same is done with the other variables. However, we assume that the initial deposit interest rate is 5%, which is IDO. The credit interest rate, ICO, is 6%. Given the SAM and interest rates, we can calibrate the other variables. Here, we calibrate mainly the stock variables. The calibration continues here. We assume sigma S is equal to 0 0.1, so that the dependence of MPS on the deposit interest rate is small. Given sigma S and MPS 0, we can calibrate the scale parameter S. The following variables are the stock variables for the central bank and commercial bank at the beginning and at the end of the period. We need to make sure that the balance sheets are met. To solve for the model, we need to initialize the variables. They are initialized at the calibrated values. The initialization continues here. We can now run the f outa model with GAMS. We first run the model to see if it generates the initial data in the SAM. This is a consistency test. As usual, we check the infeasibility and the value of Leon. This simulation gives a very small infeasibility and Leon. We can now run the model. As a first exercise, we would like to see the impact of an expansionary monetary policy and understand its transmission mechanism to the real side of the economy. To do this, we need to explain the hypothesis of our real model. What is the degree of mobility of factors of production? Are price, and particularly the wage rate, fully flexible? Do we have full employment, etc.? 
a classical closure. We can start with a classical type of closure. There are no rigidities in any market. We assume a flexible labor market, the unemployment rate is zero, and the real wage rate adjusts to maintain the full employment equilibrium. There is a perfect mobility of labor, but the stock of capital by sector is exogenous. In terms of the GAMS code, we have the following closure. The capital stock in each sector is sector specific and fixed to its initial level. Total labor supply is exogenous and fixed to the initial level. The expected inflation rate is fixed to the initial level. In addition, we have initial stock variables REF, DEP, M, CDF, and DIV, which are fixed to the initial levels. Only the refinancing rate is fixed, and shocked, which is in red. The shock is a 20% reduction in the level of the refinancing rate. In other words, it is a one percentage point reduction in the refinancing rate from 5% to 4%. What do we expect from this simulation? With the GDP, if we have full employment, real GDP will stay constant. With money, we're not sure as there is a transaction motive, but the demand depends also on the interest rate. So the transaction demand for real money will stay constant and the money creation will generate an inflationary process. How does this affect liquidity? A reduction in the refinancing rate will induce BC to borrow more from CB, increasing the liquidity needed to finance the firm investment. How does this affect the investment? The real interest rate will go down, increasing the Tobin Q and pushing the firm to invest more. And how does this affect the GDP again? With a constant real GDP, an increase in real investment is only possible if the real household consumption goes down. How is this possible? With consumption, through a drop in real household income. We can look at the results to confirm this intuition. Here we can see the simulation results. Nominal variables such as the GDP and the price level both increase by 5%. Employment is constant, with a fixed capital stock in each sector being constant too. Therefore, the real GDP is constant as well. With the factors of production available, we cannot produce more. But the real investment, IT, real, is expected to increase due to a decrease in the borrowing cost of investment. It increases by 1.2%. Since the sum of investment and consumption is the GDP, consumption needs to adjust. In fact, real consumption decreases. The simulation results continue on this slide. We can see that the financial flow variables increased. The money demand, deposits and credits all increased. There was a slight increase in the deposit interest rates while there was a slight decrease in the credit interest rate. Also, the real interest rate decreased slightly, whereas the real rate of return was unchanged. As a result, Tobin Q increased. This is the reason why the real investment increased. Basically, in this situation, an expansionary monetary policy generated inflation without changing the real GDP, but it changed the composition of the GDP. There was more investment and less real consumption. Household incomes will go up, but real consumption will go down due to the price mechanism. Even in this simple financial model, we could consider the following shocks. The central bank changes the money supply when nominal wages are sticky. Labor supply shocks, such as migration or an increase or decrease in dividends, which is a nominal variable. Remember, one could shock the nominal wage in the Keynesian context. Well, we have come to the point of summarizing the lecture. We know that there is a mysterious variable called the numeraire in real CGE models. When all exogenous variables are indexed with a price or a price level, changing the numeraire changes all the prices in nominal variables 
but does not affect the real variables. Such models are very real neoclassical CGE models. But the numeraire is linked with money in the monetary policy. This is what we have learned in this course. Of course, money does not matter in the neoclassical CGE models which postulate money neutrality. But in the short run, where nominal rigidities exist, money matters. Changing the numeraire in the presence of nominal rigidities means that the central bank is changing the target, but this stays very implicit and still is mysterious. A monetary transmission mechanism is a black box. This is the reason why we develop financial or monetary CGE models to make the mechanism more explicit. The F outa model is a simple financial CGE model. It tries to replace the numeraire with a simple banking system. We have seen that all markets are in equilibrium in the F outa model. We do not leave a commodity market equilibrium condition out of the system as a redundant equation. As a result, all the prices are endogenous. Money matters. Given the knowledge of the F outa model, we could modify the Audeta, Exter, PEP, and other real CGE models with a banking system. But we know the degree of complexity will increase if we modify these models with a financial sector. Fortunately, there are some contributions in the literature for you to read and follow. Hopefully, we will gain more knowledge about financial CGE models. Thank you, and the best of luck on your journeys.